Check one, two. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Barclays Center here in Brooklyn, New York for the post-game NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship second round matchup. First, we'll have student athletes from the University of Iowa and head coach Fran McCaffrey. Joining us here in the main interview room will be student athletes Mike Gazelle and Nicholas Baer, as well as Coach McCaffrey. Villanova student athletes follow with head coach Jay Wright. The locker room is open for 30 minutes for the student athletes that do not appear here in the main interview room. That happens simultaneously with these news conferences in the main interview room. We'll do our best to let you know when the locker rooms open and close for Iowa and Villanova. If you're joining us here in the main interview room, just a quick reminder to silence your cell phone. I'm going to silence mine now. Also, please refrain from using any flash photography. No video recording devices are permitted, and that includes camera phones. Even if it's for social media purposes, those open locker room periods are for social media video. Your Vine, your Snapchat, your Instagram, your Twitter video. You can do that outside of this room, but not in this room, please. Satellite information is the same as it's been all weekend. If you need that information, please see a representative from Hammond Communications in the back or come up and see me during one of the breaks. We'd be glad to get you that satellite information at that time. If you have a question for our student athletes, we have two microphone attendants. They'll bring the microphone in your direction as soon as we're ready for the questions. And when Villanova arrives here for their post-game news conference, the student athletes will be Ryan Archidiacono and Chris Jenkins. The rest of the Villanova student-athletes will be available in the locker room during the half-hour open locker room period. Anyone have any questions so far? I'm doing well. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate that. Also, these news conferences, as you know, are televised and streamed. So for the benefit of the live audience at home or wherever they may be watching, and for the benefits of the student athletes and the coaches joining us, please remember to use your name and media outlet before you ask your question.
Verdade. Ladies and gentlemen, the Iowa locker room is now open. It's probably safe to say the Villanova locker room is open as well, and we're joined by head coach Fran McCaffrey, as well as student athletes Mike Gazelle and Nicholas Baer. We're going to open things up with questions for the student athletes. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll send a microphone in your direction. First question for the student athletes from the University of Iowa. If you have a question, please raise your hand. There's one in the middle section to the right of the aisle. We'll open things up with Max. Um, uh, Max Bonsetter, Sports Associated for Kids. And this is for Mike. Uh, congratulations on an outstanding career at Iowa and a great season. What was the most fun about being a senior on the Iowa basketball team? Um, you know, first of all, thank you for that. And you know, I had so many memories throughout my entire career. Um, just being a senior out there, um, just enjoying every day and how close our, our team was this year. We had, you know, 17 guys that really came together this year. And it, it made all the success that we had throughout the season that much more fun when you're playing alongside guys that, you know, you feel like they're your brothers. And so it was, it was a blast. And, you know, it's a season that I'll, I'll never forget. Continuing with questions for the student athletes from the University of Iowa. There's one on the right side toward the front. Go ahead, Len. Len Robbins, New York Post for both guys. I know it's difficult after a loss like this, but what did you find most impressive about Villanova in that first half? We're going to ask Mike to take that first, followed by Nicholas. Um, I'd say they did a very good job of, of moving the ball. and. Um, I think we didn't come out with the intensity defensively that we needed um, against a team like that. They're a team that is very unselfish. Um, you know, they just play within themselves. And, you know, we, we turned around a little bit the second half, but, you know, that was, that was most impressed with the first half. Nicholas, same question. Yeah, just to echo Mike, I would say that they did share the ball very well. Um, that was, that's what sticks out to me. But also, I thought their activity level defensively was very, very good, and um, you know, th I thought that they did a really nice job of getting into us and pressuring us, but um, like, t like Mike said, I thought they shared the ball really well and that they pressed us well. Continuing with questions for the student athletes from the University of Iowa, student athletes only at this time. Another question on the right side toward the center. Scott Dockerman, Cedar Rapids Gazette. This is for Mike. I mean, I'm sure after four years, you're kind of your 
thoughts kind of circle all the way around from when you came to Iowa and now that you're leaving. Uh, what are you going to take away from your experiences at Iowa and how you've helped change the program and better the program over your career? Um, you know, I, I think there's too much just to put it into <coughs> one answer. Um, you know, I look at the player I am now compared to where I came here and the person I am now. Um, you know, I've improved in, in so many ways, and the coaching staff has really helped me he me grow as a person. And, you know, the, the strides that we made every single year uh, was a lot of fun, and a lot of fun to just be a part of. And, you know, we have a, a bright future here at Iowa. We have a lot of young guys that, you know, play the game the right way. And they're they're close knit group, and you know I'm gonna be very excited to continue to watch them next year and, and throughout the years. Continuing with questions for the student athletes from the University of Iowa. If you have a question, please raise your hand. There's one on the right side toward the front. Tom Mary, AP Radio. Obviously, it's disappointing to be eliminated today, but can you characterize the season as success, getting to the NCAA and winning a game? We'll ask Mike to take that first, followed by Nicholas. Yeah, I mean, you pretty much play your whole season to make this tournament. And, you know, obviously you're competing for a conference tournament, you're competing for or a conference championship, um, but you're also trying to make this tournament. And it's a very hard task just to make this tournament and let alone win a game here. So, you know, I'm very proud of my guys, the way we handle ourselves all season. You know, the season's a grind. There's a lot of ups and downs during the season. And we just kept plugging along, kept working hard every single day and getting better every single day. And, you know, it's, it's a great accomplishment because, you know, every team in this tournament's a, a very good team. Nicholas. Yeah, it's a great honor to play in the NCAA tournament. And it was a goal of ours from the beginning of the season. And, you know, it's sad that we had to, you know, lose today, but I was just, I'm, I really enjoyed playing with these seniors, and I'm going to miss playing with them. We have time for one more question for the student athletes from Iowa, if there is one. There's one all the way in the back to the right side. Hi, guys. Congratulations to Andrew Rosario on New York Beacon. Can you just talk about your head coach and what he means to this team, what he means to you guys as individuals? And again, we'll ask Mike to take that first, followed by Nicholas. I mean, Coach McCaffrey means a lot to me. Um, I grew up in Nebraska, so I wasn't even thinking about coming to Iowa when I was younger. And Coach McCaffrey got the job, and the first thing he did was come up and see me at my high school. And, you know, he really had a vision, vision for myself and a vision for our team and how we'd have a chance to really re rebuild a program. You know, Iowa was once one of the premier programs in the country, and we had been down a little bit in recent years. So he was selling me on that vision. And I knew there was going to be something special here. I knew the guys he was bringing in, and... You know, I know he's had success at so many different schools. And, you know, I wanted to, to play for Coach because he's a guy that just gives you the ultimate confidence as a player. And I knew that he would allow me to grow and allow me to get better every single year. And, you know, that's what was the best part about making the decision to come to Iowa. And, you know, that was one of the be best decisions of my life. Nicholas, same question. Yeah, a pretty sharp contrast to Mike, all I ever wanted to do was come to the University of Iowa. And, you know, I grew up in Bend, North Iowa, where, you know, there's Tiger Hawk bumper stickers on just about every car. So um, Coach Caffrey, he gave me the opportunity to walk on here and gave me a, an opportunity to play here, which is all I ever wanted was to wear a Hawkeye jersey. So I can't say enough about the opportunity Coach McCaffrey gave me to achieve my dream. We'd like to thank Mike and Nicholas for joining us here in the main interview room. They're going to he head back to the locker room right now, which remains open for another 15 minutes or so. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you. We're opening questions now for head coach Fran McCaffrey. If you have a question for Coach McCaffrey, please raise your hand. And there's one on the left side in the front row to start things off. Hey, Fran. Bob Groats, Delaware County Daily Times. You played some really good teams this year. Where does Villanova kind of fit in there? I mean, you, you've seen them before, but now after playing them, how do they fit in and, and how far do you think they could take this? I mean, in a, some type of assessment. You know, Bob, I, I, I really think th they can go a long way. Uh, they're a really difficult team to guard. Uh, and a lot of times, really talented offensive teams play defense in spurts, and they don't. They, they play defense uh, equally as well as they play offense. 
you know, and I think you heard it pretty clearly from, from our guys that, you know, they've been impressed watching film and then playing against Villanova, how they share the basketball. You've got a lot of really talented guys. You've got a lot of guys with strong egos. But it's clear to me that as a group, you know, Jay has got those guys committed to one thing, and that's playing together and winning. And I think that's evident in, you know, their, their success over the years. You know, it's not this year. It is this year, but it's last year, the year before, the year before. I mean, there's a winning culture there that, uh, you know, says a lot about the character of the individuals on that team. And I think if you, if you possess that kind of character, then you have a real legitimate shot to advance in this tournament because that's what you need. Now, it also helps when you have shot makers and you have some depth and you have some athleticism and some size. I mean, they got all the pieces that you have to have. But there, there's a lot more to it. And so I, 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 you know, I would say, you know, to you look at the really good teams that we played this year, so many of them in our league, and we played a lot out of the league. We played Notre Dame, we played Dayton, we played, you know, Michigan State. Uh, you go right on down the line, all the teams in our league, Maryland, uh, Villanova is a team that, uh, that I look as an elite team, but I, I, I look at them more as an elite program, I think, than anything else. Continuing with questions for Coach McCaffrey. If you have a question, please raise your hand. There's one on the right side toward the center. Fran, uh, in, this, in late in the first half when they really started to make their run, what was happening defensively that was enabling them to get some open shots and makes? Well, they, they, uh, our, our closeouts weren't as crisp as they needed to be we, you know, because they're, they're a tough group to close out to because they'll rip and drive on you. So you're, you, we, we closed out a little bit short, and they were making threes. All right, the, the, We had a couple uncharacteristic turnovers that led to easy transition layups, and that was a big part of it as well. Uh, we didn't get to the offensive glass in the first, we did in the second half. In the first half, we didn't get there enough, which was critical because we didn't shoot it well enough. You know, sometimes if you don't go, if you're shooting it well, that's one thing, but uh, you know, I'm a little bit more pleased with how we played in the second half in terms of getting to the glass, taking care of the ball, and, and executing our offense. But, you know, that said, we still shot two for 12 in the second half from three. And, you know, it's hard to come back. You've got to make threes. You know, we, we had good looks, at the, look, good looks at it from three. If we could have made a few, you know, maybe it would have been a little bit different. Continuing with questions for Coach McCaffrey, if there are any, please raise your hand. We'd like to thank Coach McCaffrey thank for you. joining us in the main interview room. The Iowa locker room remains open for about 10 minutes. Villanova locker room is open as well, and we'll be joined in a moment by student athletes from Villanova.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're joined now by Villanova student athletes Ryan Archidiacono and Chris Jenkins, as well as the head coach Jay Wright. We'll ask Coach Wright to make an opening statement, then we'll take questions. Uh, we're th we're thrilled. We're thrilled uh, that we we came out and played the first half like that. When uh, when I, I shook hands with Fran, I just said, you know, hey, I'm sorry. You know, we just, we, we haven't played the first half like that in a long time. Uh, we played a game against Xavier at home that we played like that, and um, we've been on the other side of this. Cause when you just have a team that comes out and makes shots, makes every play defensively, you know, it's tough to get back in it. So I, I just thought the first half was a key to the game. We we were just we weren't just hitting on all cylinders. Great leadership by Ryan Archidiacono and Daniel Chefu, and I'm thrilled for that senior class that they get to play in a Sweet 16. We're gonna open things up with questions. First for the student athletes from Villanova. Questions for the student athletes only at this time. And we have one in the back on the right, Tim. Uh, Tim Bonas on the Washington Post. Uh, Ryan, it looked like when they announced on the loudspeaker that you guys had made it to the Sweet 16, you, you looked like you kind of sighed, maybe a little sigh of relief. Is it, is it nice to, to finally be able to kind of check that box off? Uh, yeah, for sure. It was definitely a big time sigh of relief. I was uh, ecstatic that we won our, our, our game against Iowa because we know how good of a team they are. But um, I just, I'm happy for our senior class to be able to get to experience it. And I know I was ecstatic. Next question is to the right of the aisle for Nicole. Nicole Auerbach, USA Today. Ryan, this is for you. Um, can you just describe your relationship with Jay? I mean, you guys had a long extended hug there at the end when you got taken out for the last time. Um, I know it's been four years of ups and downs tournament wise, finally getting the Sweet 16 together. What, what's going through your mind during the hug? And, and just can you describe your relationship? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a great relationship uh, ever since day one. I think uh, we've had trust in each other and he trusted me as a freshman and throughout uh, my years. But I think it's just, I, I try to think of myself as him on the floor because he tells me that if he was to play and when he played, that's how he want uh, a player to play. So I just take pride in, uh, in wearing this jersey in Villanova and just my, re my relationship with the coach is uh, very special. We're kind of from the same area in Pennsylvania, but um, it, it's just, yeah, yeah, it, it's a great one. <laughs> Can't see that. We're going to move over to the left side, all the way left. Uh, Ryan, VU Hoops, SB Nation. So I know with you, Arch, you were over here. Oh. Yeah, we go. <laughs> um, I know with you, Arch, you, your freshman year, you guys got in as an at-large your freshman year against UNC. But for Chris, you know, this is your third time now in the tournament. And each time you've been with those round of 32 exits, what does this mean for you knowing finally that your team can get past that hump? That question's for Chris. Yeah, it means a lot, especially, you know, like Coach said, for our senior class because they've done so much for our program. And uh, for our junior class to, you know, come into school and have the, those guys to look up to. And, you know, for us to win in advance, it, it means a lot. On the right side of the room toward the front, Len. Len Robbins, New York Post, for both plays. You guys have all heard that Sweet 16 question probably till you got sick this entire week. And I'm just wondering, did you guys have any sense before the game that you would come out so aggressive, so loose, so unburdened? Ryan first, please, then Chris. No, I don't think, I think it was kind of the same way like it was the other day when we played UNC Asheville. Uh, we tried to keep every game as the same magnitude and uh, we just try to come out and play our basketball and the basketball we know how to play. And um, I think we tried to hold each other accountable. And I think in the first half, we, we knew how good Iowa was. So we knew how, how uh, U, uh, Utah and Jock could go off at any time. So we tried to focus on them. And then um, I think we just made stops and, uh, or got stops and made all the little plays. Chris, same question. Yeah, like Art said, we just we came out aggressive on defense and, and that fueled our offense. And uh, we were able to, get, able to get some turnovers. And uh, you know our seniors did a great job in leading us. And, making sure that we stayed on top of, you know, playing Villanova basketball for 40 minutes. Moving to the left of the aisle, Adam. Uh, Adam Zagoria from SNY. For both guys, uh, Ryan, you said it was a sigh of relief. I mean, do you almost feel like now that you won this game, the, the pressure's off and, and you can just kind of move forward even more freely? And, and how far, you know, can this team go for both, both guys? Ryan, first, please, then Chris. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a sigh of relief. I just think the biggest thing is I'm just – Honestly, just done answering the questions about getting past the second weekend. I know it was uh, it was always in the back of our, our senior minds and our and our team, but um, 
we definitely can go all the way as long as we stick to what we do. If we defend like we did in the first half and just stay solid like that, our offense will eventually come. But I think once we set the tone um, on the defensive end and rebounding, and um, we can go as far as, as far as that takes us. Chris. Yeah, like R said, just defense and rebounding because, you know, at this point in the season, you know, all the teams that you're going to play are great offensively. So it's going to come down who executes and who's the tougher team on defense. Final question for the student athletes is going to go to Joe, front left. Hey, Ryan, to your left, Joe Giuliano, Philly Inquirer. Uh, this was your 140th game for Nova. That's more than anybody else. Uh, what does that mean to have that kind of longevity and uh, just be the guy at Villanova? Uh, I'm old. <laughs> I'm a senior. Um, I try to, it's great. And um, I, I think our training staff are, has done a great job with keeping me healthy, whether I'm diving on the floor, diving over tables. So um, I've just been able to uh, stick with it and just kind of trust every, every trust the process of what Villanova basketball is. But we know that as a senior class, that next year, I think these guys will beat every record that we ever set here. So <laughs> got to look for it out, uh, out for that junior class. We'd like to thank Ryan and Chris for joining us here in the main interview room. They're going to head back to the Villanova locker room, which should be open for just a few more minutes. Questions for Coach Wright, and let's start right where we finished off with the student athletes. Front left, Joe. Jay, the guys in the locker room were all saying that nothing was different this morning. No extra sense of anticipation or excitement. How does that happen? What? It, it just doesn't seem like they were overly phased by, you know, an elimination game uh, when everyone had been talking about it for a year. Yeah. We, I, we have a, a really mature group, and, and Joe, we, I think I've been trying to explain this. The, the, will, the will of a, a really determined athlete is much greater than any of the pressure that media or coaches or anyone puts on them. You know, they were, they were so determined um, to, to win this game and, and play, give their best effort in this game that it just superseded everything and we we try to approach as a coaching staff we try to approach each game that way too that you know what you've, you've put all the work in let's let's just do what we do and and fortunately it was good enough for them I'm, I'm really happy for that senior class that it was good enough we'll stay on the left with Josh uh, Josh Newman Asbury Park Press obviously for these guys uh, it's uncharted wars now going to a sweet 16 but the fact that it's a lot of older guys like Arch and Daniel would you expect them not to be wide-eyed and that they would come out on Thursday just like it's a regular game this coming Thursday yeah I, I really do they, they, they they've been in a lot you know they've won a Big East championship played in Big East championship games you know played in Bahamas championship game NIT championship game they, they they've been through a lot um, we, we won't, they, they will not be um, impacted by the moment. I think they'll be inspired. Now Miami might have a lot to say about it, but <laughs> about what happens there. But uh, I, I have great confidence in them that way, I really do. Staying on the left side in that same area, Adam, did you have one? No. Okay, let's move to the right of the aisle then with Nicole. <laughs> Thanks, AZ. Uh, Nicole Auerbach, USA Today. No. Hey. Jay, can you kind of walk me through when, when Jalen's coming in, was the plan all along to use him and Arch at the same time? And what is playing two point guards do for this team that last year's team, the year before his team, didn't do? You know, I, want, I didn't want to be rude when you asked your previous question, but when you asked him about the relationship, Chris said, you're his son, because they all call him my son. They, so they busted. He, that's why he said I couldn't say that. Um, so I didn't want you to think we were whispering about you up here. Um, that was the plan. You know, we, we, we look at our, our guards as guards. You know, we really don't have a point guard. We don't have a two guard. We don't have a three guard. We, we want all of our guards to do the same thing. So when we were recruiting, Arch had the biggest impact on the recruitment of uh, Jalen. When Jalen came on his recruiting visit, he stayed in Arch's room. We had a hotel room with him, but he stayed and slept in Arch's room. They developed a great relationship. They are very, very similar uh, people and players very similar backgrounds um, so we knew it was gonna we knew it was gonna be fine and the traditional definition of a one guard and two guard a lot of people asked us about that thought it was gonna be a problem but we were not worried about it we're gonna stay in that second row on this right side 
Is there a question right there? If not, we'll move over on this side. Ed Benkin, KYW Radio. Yeah. Jay, now that this group finally busted through and got to the Sweet 16, when you look at what's going on around the tournament this year, is it more than ever a reminder that even if you're a favorite, if you're a high seed, just how difficult it is to get to this point? Definitely, Ed. You know, when, when you don't get there a number of times, nobody, they, no one wants to hear that from the team that doesn't get there, right? And, and I get that. But that's really what we, when everyone was asking us, you know, are you worried about your program? Are you, worried? you just know how hard it is. You look at Michigan State, you know, I mean, that, that team is a great team. It only takes one game. And uh, if you really follow the tournament, you see it happens a lot. So we were not concerned at all about the tournament. I, we wanted it badly for this senior class. They're just great guys. I really didn't want, want them to go down as, you know, the winningest class in Villanova history, but they never got past the first weekend. That, that class, for everybody else, we were fine. To the left of the aisle. Jeremy Schneider, Star Ledger. Um, as far as just, we got to talk to the players about this, but for you, how, re how relieving is it to get past the first weekend? And, and the past few years with the disappointments, has it weighed on you? You guys have accomplished so much, but you know, everyone bringing up the first Senso 09 thing. What, what's the relief and what the past few years have been like for you? It's, it, honestly, the, the natural, um, you know, it's, it's like if, if you, uh, you know, if, if you have a cold and everybody keeps asking you, How, how's your cold, how's your cold, how are you doing? And you, like after a while, you're like, right, I'm, f I'm fine, you know. You just, you know you got to answer the question. I'm just relieved that we don't have to answer the question, honestly. It wasn't, it wasn't that big of a deal to us, you know. It, um, like I explained earlier, we just, we don't evaluate our program that way. The biggest part for me was I really wanted those. We have uh, Ryan Archidiakono and Daniel Cheffer, but we have three walk-ons, um, uh, Pat, Pat Rafferty, um, Henry Lowe, um, uh, Pat, I'm blanking, Pat, Kerry, and Kevin, Kevin Rafferty, um, Pat Farrell, Kevin Rafferty. These three walk-ons, they were the original bench mob guys. Like they used to do all, they did that before anybody did it, their freshman year when we were, when we stunk. And I told them, I told them, we need that because we need some fun around here. We need some positivity. But then after their freshman year, I said to them, hey, guys, we need you to grow up now, and we need you to have an impact on these younger guys. And they really did. They stopped doing it. We had posters of the bench mob. This was back when they were freshmen. And they stopped doing it, and they really concentrated on basketball and getting the, the younger guys to buy in. So they're such a special group. I, I, I'm... If, if I'm really honest with you, the biggest uh, stress on me was I wanted it for them, and we all did. All the way in the back to the right, Tim. Uh, Tim Bonner from the Washington Post. Uh, Jay, you, you guys, could, I mean, you mentioned how it wasn't a big deal to, to kind of address this all season, but you guys could have easily dismissed any talk about this not getting past this first weekend or, you know, said it's, we're not going to talk about it. Do you, do you think the fact that you were kind of so upfront about the way you guys had to kind of just deal with it all year helped this weekend, the way you, you guys kind of, you know, dispatched these teams? Yeah, it, it might have. It really, it really might have. But we'll, and, and the way we looked at it was we were either going to win this game and that was going to go away, or we were going to lose this game and they're going to have to deal with it. All right, that's, that's life. you got to deal with it. It's like uh, the Buffalo Bills. You know, they never won the Super Bowl. They got there three times, you know. It, it's just four. So I had some Buffalo Bills fans. I mean – you know, that's sports. You know, you, you lay it out there, you get a lot of praise, but you got to deal with it. So we, I think they really knew that's what it was going to be. And, and maybe that, you know, maybe that did help us because they weren't afraid. They definitely were not afraid of the failure. Nobody was afraid of playing this game. Great Iowa team. We knew we could have lost this game. No one was afraid of that outcome. We have two more. We'll try to get them both then. Back right. Andrew Rosario, New York Post coach. Um, typically, teams make runs in the second half, especially after being down by a lot of points. What did you tell your guys at halftime to make sure that you didn't allow them to get back into the game? Yeah, I was proud of our guys in the second half as well as we played in the first half because we said at halftime that Iowa doesn't have to press us to speed this game up because they play so fast anyway. So, so don't you know we don't. All they have to do is play the way they play because they've beaten teams the same way in the first half. They're capable. And I thought our guys responded to that really well. Um, some teams, you know, they play a slower pace. They got to change how they play to get back in it. They were not going to have to. And, um, and we know guys like, 
Utah and Jock, they could just go on a, a spurt. That's why we made the subs at the end. Them being down 16 isn't that big of a deal. Those guys could hit threes consecutively. You could be in trouble. Final question to the right of the aisle. Jay, can you elaborate on your relationship with your son, Arch? <laughs> it, um, he, we both are from Bucks County. We're, we're both from the same. Uh, our high schools are right next to each other, rivals. Uh, he, he is, a, um, you know, if you grow up in Indiana, you, you aspire to play in Indiana. It's, it's your dream school. But if you're in the Northeast, there's so many schools around you. Both his parents went to Villanova. Uh, his, his mother was on my wife's freshman hall. The kid grew up watching Villanova basketball. Him putting on a Villanova jersey is like, uh, you know, a kid at Alabama put on an Alabama football jersey. He, he just lives it. I really don't, I really don't talk to him that much. It, it's amazing. He, he is me. He takes care of everything. Uh, I really do worry about not having him here next year because I'm gonna have to work harder. Because he just, he, everything he does is what I do. Everything he thinks about is what I think about. So I really, I never meet with him. And it really allows me to coach the other guys because my best player, I don't really have to spend time with. We know exactly how we think, we're right. His family is from, his parents grew up where my parents grew up in Northeast Philly. It's just, we're the same person. It's, it has just been a thrill to have him. Uh, I really do want to cherish every second we have him. We're gonna squeeze one more in for Adam. Thank you, you're the best, Mark. Um, I know there was a lot of talk about not going to Philly. Is it almost good going to Louisville now you get more focus, you won't have the distractions of Philly and you just kind of focus on, on playing? That's the way we're going to look at it, Adam. But I, I, would, be love, I would love being at home to Philly for a week right now. I, I just, I'll just got to be honest about that. But Louisville is a good spot. I'm not, I, I'm not mad about it. And that is the advantage, you know, that you, you, know, you don't have as many distractions. The tickets, the tickets for us... This was like a home game. That was the other thing. You know, I, kind of, I said sorry to Fran. I just, like, that was a home game. That was crazy. The, 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 villain, the Nova Nation was so loud in there. And if we would have played in Philly, but the tickets were a major problem. So that, that helps. It really does. There is a positive not being in Philly. I'd still rather be in Philly. We'd like to thank and congratulate Coach Wright. Thanks, Mark. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you. Uh, Big East SID of the year, Mike Sheridan, is telling us that there may be a few more minutes left of open locker room for Villanova if you want to go check that out. Thank you. Thanks, Coach.